I think it's safe to say, Wolfenstein as a franchise is very underappreciated, considering how Wolfenstein 3D inspired Doom, and Doom went on to inspire every single game that came after it. While Doom was pumping sequel after sequel, we didn't get a single Wolfenstein game in 9 years. So naturally, Wolfenstein started to fade away, and everyone praised Doom for the cool new FPS games we were getting. Fuck you, Gordon! But I'm not gonna talk about those games. Between Wolfenstein 3D and the more recent Wolfenstein games, a certain game was released. A certain game that I consider one of the best first-person shooters of all time. Most people would agree that Return to Castle Wolfenstein is the best Wolfenstein game out there, but surprisingly, there's barely any content out on it nowadays. I remember playing through it for the first time years ago and thinking I haven't played another shooter like it. If you've never played it before, it might look like the most generic, uninteresting, and outdated action game ever. But I assure you, okay, some of that is true, but it's not a generic action game. This game gets quite goofy down the line, just take my word for it. Since this game is 22 years old, you gotta waste a decent 15 to 20 minutes getting this shit to run on the red resolution. 20 minutes later, and we have one of the classic old school shooters ready to go. Naturally, I uh, played on the hardest difficulty. Cause I'm not a fucking pussy. Our first mission is simple. Escape from Castle Wolfenstein. We start the mission with just a knife. This knife is our best friend. A big part of this game is stealth, and the knife is the safest way to do just that. An S-tier weapon for sure. Right after that we pick up a Luger, one of the most iconic pistols in history. Unfortunately, this gun is hot garbage. And there's literally zero use for it, since before we even encounter a single enemy, we can immediately pick up the MP40, which uses the same ammo type but is just better in every single way. When it comes to guns in this game, the MP40 is the old reliable. A tier. Oh, and that Luger is by far the worst gun in the game, so... <sighs> yeah. The design of the castle is damn near perfect. Dimly lit foggy hallways, with sounds of suffering coming from inside the walls. If it wasn't for the outdated visuals, I'd say this game is very immersive. Visually, it's not that bad either. It nails that early 2000s video game -y vibe. Stealth is a big part of this game, but for the most part it's completely optional. You could go in all guns blazing if you want, but for the first mission I chose to be sneaky. It also helps that at the beginning of the game you hear this ominous track that inspires you to be sneaky. But after you're detected, it turns into this epic, bolder and louder version, which lets you know the jig is up, but it's okay, you can just kill them all. The shooting aspect is a bit janky, but once you get used to how the guns feel, every encounter is very satisfying. One of my favorite encounters is this one right here, where an enemy from the bottom floor starts shooting upwards and destroys the floor. Back then, being able to interact with the environment like that was very impressive, which was partly why Half-Life was so impressive. Stop fucking with the microwave! Overall, Chapter 1 is great, but we're getting near the end now, and it's the perfect time to talk about the Mauser rifle. In Chapter 1, we mostly use it as a rifle because we don't have a scope for it yet. Without the scope, it's not accurate and takes two shots to kill an enemy, but we're gonna get a scope right away in Chapter 2, and then it becomes a reliable sniper rifle, so... And just like that, we finally escape from Castle Wolfenstein. Follow me. We must get you inside the village. Now, chapter 2 is where shit gets real. Not right away though. The first mission is mostly just an introduction. While I love the way the snowy village looks, it doesn't offer anything new gameplay wise. But we do get some new weapons. Courtesy of our undercover friend Agent Kessler, we get the scope from the Mauser rifle and a Tommy gun. The Tommy gun has a fast rate of fire and deals a lot of damage. It would have been an S-tier weapon, if it wasn't for its ammo being so goddamn rare. As cool as the Tommy gun is, sadly it goes to the B-tier. Later, Kessler gives us the Silenced Stand Submachine Gun. Our first silenced weapon. 
Famously, this gun has the downside of overheating pretty quickly. That terrible gun in Wolfenstein that would overheat after like two seconds. But still, it can't deny how useful this gun will be. A tier. Now, since the beginning, there has been a lot of talk about a certain group of elite Nazis named the SS Paranormal Division, who are rumored to be doing suspicious things in a graveyard. Supernatural things. Like raising the dead, allegedly. After finally getting to that rumored graveyard, we find an old looking crypt, which we must investigate. Here's where chapter 2 actually begins. Inside the crypt has a whole new vibe. Right as we got used to the standard soldier enemy, we encountered the zombified bodies of ancient warriors. And these things are brutal. They behave completely differently and you have to adapt to how they play. This massive change in tone scared the shit out of a lot of kids back in 2001. Wacky stuff like this is why this game is so good. For the most part, the pacing of this game is great. Because whenever you get used to something, the game immediately throws something new at you. Anyway. One garbage boss fight later and that's the end of chapter 2. Chapter 3 starts off with the infamous forest mission. The most hated mission in the entire game. But why is this mission so hated? Well, remember when I said stealth is always an option? Not this time. Cause it's mandatory now! In this mission we have one basic goal. Get to the truck without being detected. Sounds easy right? I thought so too. So I was sneaking my way through casually, avoiding killing as much as I could, because it's not required for the mission, only I ran into a small problem. This one random soldier was on high alert mode for no reason, meaning every single time he saw a single pixel of my hitbox, he would immediately start shooting, which triggered the alarms, which failed the mission. This went on for a bunch of times. One time I decided to wait for him to calm down, and then this happened. What? 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 This encounter itself wasn't a big deal. What worried me was that this might happen again. But no way that could happen, right? The weapon that soldier was talking about was the snooper rifle. The snooper rifle is a regular sniper rifle with a silencer and a special scope. The problem with this gun is that you can't see shit through that scope. But the fact that it's silenced makes it pretty useful, so... A tier, I guess. Finally, I was almost there. Next to that truck. Remember when I said killing is not required for the mission? That is true, but if we like to, we can still kill everyone. There is only one enemy we absolutely cannot kill, and that's the truck driver. Cause we need him to drive us, so killing him will fail the mission instantly. Only one problem, the truck driver was on high alert mode. This guy quickly became my arch nemesis. I can't even begin to talk about how many times I failed this mission because of him, but I couldn't do anything to stop him. I had to get creative. I tried climbing the tower, I tried walking on the wall, I tried hugging the wall and moving slowly, I tried hugging the wall and moving quickly. Even when he couldn't see me, he would still ring the alarm. I destroyed the alarm, really thought I was a genius with that one. This time, I didn't get a mission fail, in fact, nothing happened at all, I still couldn't escape. I tried climbing this wall, I couldn't, I even tried cheating at one point, but I couldn't get the goddamn console to work. I got so desperate, that I started doing the previous methods again. I kept trying again and again, but every time I would fail again and again, every time I got close to that truck, the alarm to Eventually I gave up. After doing some research, I realized it's a common bug. When it happens, there's nothing we can do about it. The mission becomes impossible. The only choice left was to restart. To add insult to injury, even when I completed the mission, an enemy that I left alive bugged out and ruined the cutscene. By the way, I failed this mission 88 times. Just in case you were looking for an exact number. This mission was a stain on chapter 3. But thankfully, it's followed by some of the best missions in the game. That truck unknowingly brought us to a German rocket base which plans to fire a rocket towards London. Our mission is to stop that from happening. No! 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 All of that was pretty cool, but 
We've done quite a lot of damage so far and we have to deal with the reinforcements. The Black Guards, aka the paratroopers, are some of the strongest enemies in the game. They can melt away your HP in a second thanks to their FG42 fully automatic rifle. You will be using this gun a lot from now on, for better or worse. S-tier. After the damage we've done, the higher ups now know us personally. But before they could send any more reinforcements, we escape using their own aircraft. Chapter 4 is the closest this game comes to being an average FPS game. It's not bad by any means, I just don't have anything to say about it. This one random encounter was pretty funny. So how do I disarm this thing? Alright, oh we get some new weapons too. The Colt 45. I have no idea why this gun even exists. It does slightly more damage than the Luger, but uses the super rare Tommy gun ammo. The Vicky straight up says don't use it. D tier. But here's where it gets interesting. The flamethrower. It might look very cool, but it has this weird delay that ruins it for me. I didn't use it too many times since the enemies can deal some damage before they catch on fire, but it's still very fun to use. B tier. And that's all I had to say for most of chapter 4. In the first three missions, we're just looking for intel on Death's Head. If you've played other Wolfenstein games, you might have heard of him. He's a sick bastard who likes to create super weapons out of flesh and machine. These super weapons come in the form of lopers. The lopers are terrifying. Oh, what the fuck? They have a lot of HP and can do a shit ton of damage. It's best to pull out the big guns from here, like the rocket launcher. We also get the iconic Venom gun. It's a minigun, 10 out of 10. Chapter 5 continues the same sci-fi element, entering X-Labs, the place where those super soldiers were made. This place is pretty creepy too. The lab is cold and colorless. There's no music playing, it's just this. Right away we get the vibe that these super soldiers are not very well contained. At the end of the chapter, you better have some HP left, cause we're about to meet the masterpiece. This boss fight is very unfair. The super soldier deals a lot of damage very quickly, while you also have to deal with the annoying scientist shooting from above. This fight could have been solid, but it ended up being another bad boss fight. At least we can get the Tesla gun afterwards. This gun is very fun to use on regular enemies, but from here we won't be seeing regular enemies anymore. But I gotta give it some props, it looks like it doesn't belong in this game. A tier. And that's the tier list completed. We're getting close to the end. Chapter 6 also has a forced stealth mission, but this one is actually good. Instead of a wide open field, the village is tight and dark, the perfect setting for a stealth mission. I love the way this level sounds, no background music, just ambience. And we're not dealing with no name soldiers anymore. We are here to take out key members of the Nazi party personally. With all that said, there's only one thing left to do. Blaskovitz returns to Castle Wolfenstein. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Here it comes, the finale. When we return to Castle Wolfenstein, the place is a mess. Barely even recognizable. This whole time, the Nazis have been working on something called Operation Resurrection. Their plan is to resurrect the spirit of a 1000 year old warlord to use as their most powerful weapon. I told you it was gonna get goofy down the line. And here it is, Heinrich, the ultimate weapon, in all its glory.
Gotta say, 10 year old me was very proud to finish this game. I stormed Normandy. I fought the Nazis. After finishing the video, I realized there's a fan-made mod on the game called The Real Return to Castle Wolfenstein, which kind of remasters the game and adds a bunch of new content. I think that's great! As fun as the game was to replay, it's really flawed, and could certainly use an actual remake. Even though it's an old game, it still has a community, and people seem to be on board with some sort of a remake. Considering how disappointing Wolfenstein Youngblood was, Going back to a beloved classic might be a good idea for its software, or machine games, I don't really know who owns the Wolfenstein IP anymore. If this video ended up getting any views and you managed to watch till the end, thank you. Please like and subscribe so I can afford to feed my cat. He is starving.